Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 132. Day 3132, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition day 132. Yesterday we started doing the practice test. We started doing the practice test which you find at the end of the book, the first practice test. And today we are on page number 355. We did the first six problems yesterday. We'll pick up from page problem number seven. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page number 355 and read the problem to yourself. It says X capital letter X it says is the name of the set. X is the name of the set. X we are told is the is the set of all integers all integers n such that such that it lies between the absolute value of n that is absolute value of n lies between 2 and 5. Absolute value of n. Make sure you understand that part. I could have written this question ahead of time, but I didn't on purpose because we understand it better as we as we write it together, as we read it together. Absolute value. Make sure you pay attention to it as I already said it once. Let's look at column A. In column A, they are talking about the absolute value of the greatest integer in set X. And in column B we have the absolute value of the least integer in set X. Absolute value of the least integer, absolute value of the greatest integer. So the best thing to do here is actually identify our set. Let's identify all the elements in set X. Set X is a set of all integers. They have to be whole numbers such that they, they are either equal, equal to or less than, equal to or greater than 2 or equal to or less than 5. In other words, the set X, set X will contain, set X will contain it can have 2, it can have 3, it can have 4, or it can have 5. What else can we have? Well, because we have taken the absolute value of it, well, absolute value of negative 2, absolute value of negative 2, what's the absolute value of negative 2? Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and 2, of course, is equal to 2. So it's not just 2, 3, 4, and 5, but it's also negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Let's line them up like this. That's our set. These are all the members of the set. Not just the positive value. Do you understand? The set X consists of, and if you were to write it properly, we always start with the smallest number. So set X, if we were to identify all the elements, all the members of the set X, set X contains negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. At first column says absolute value of the greatest integer in set X. What's the greatest integer that we find here? The greatest integer that we find in set x is this guy right here, the positive 5. And we are supposed to take the absolute value of it. Absolute value of positive 5, of course, is just 5. And then they go on to say absolute value of the least integer in set x. What's the least integer in set x? The least integer is negative 5. And if we were to take the absolute value of negative 5, what's the absolute value of negative 5? Absolute value of negative 5 is again 5. So which column is bigger? This is 5 and this is 5. They are equal. The answer is C. The answer is C. Unfortunately, unfortunately, only one quarter of the people, only about one quarter of the people, when this question appeared in the real exam, uh, only one quarter of the people managed to get this thing right. Almost three quarters of the people missed it. Almost three quarters of the people missed it. You have to think rationally. Do you understand? You have to cover your bases. Answer is 26. Answer is C. Where did 26 come from? The 26 percentile. Let's look at the next one. Number 8. 
In number 8 we are told that m and x are positive integers. m and x are positive integers. And m is a multiple of 3. m is a multiple of 3. The idea is to keep it simple. Okay? Keep it simple and yet be rational. That's the key part here. Do you understand? It's not the math. They're not trying to see how much math you know. Math is just a tool that they're using to see how well you can think under pressure. How clear your thinking process is. Let's look at column A. In column A, we have x raised to m versus x over x raised to 3. And in column B, we have x raised to m raised to m, m over 3. Let's put in something here. Let's put in here. Let's, uh, we are told, first of all, that m is a multiple of 3. Don't make it complicated. m is a multiple of 3. We could plug in 6 or 9 or 30 or 3, 33 million. 33 million would also be a multiple of 3. Let's keep it simple. Let's make m equal to 3. They tell you that m is a multiple of 3 and they are, they are both they are integers, they have to be whole numbers obviously if you are going to be multiple of 3 but they have to be positive which rules out negative 3 they have to be positive, the smallest value that you can think of that will qualify as a valid uh, value for m is 3 let's put it in, watch what happens, ok? if you put in m equal to 3, watch what happens we will end up here with x equal to 3, x, x raised to 3 over x raised to 3 which means if m is equal to 3, this guy would just be 1 what do we get here? Here we get x raised to 3 over 3, which is simply x, which is simply x. So then what happens? Well, nothing happens. Here we have 1, here we have 1, here we have, so what happens next? Nothing happens once. We simply have to understand that if x happens to be more than 1, if x happens to be more than, if this is 1 and this is x, if x happens to be more than 1, then the answer would be x, if x is more than 1, let's suppose x is equal to 2, then this is pointing the wrong way. If x is 2, then answer would be b. What happens if x is equal to 1? What if x is equal to 1? So in this case, the if x is 2, the answer will be b. What if x is equal to 1? If x were equal to 1, we would, we would have, here we would have ended up with 1 raised to 3 over 3. It's just 1 which is exactly what we have here. Once we plug in, once we plug in m equal to 3, once we plug in m equal to 3 in this column, in the first column, it doesn't matter what x is because the numerator and denominator become equal and it's just 1. So x plays no role in column A, but it does play a role in column B, which is why we have to plug in 2 times. If, 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 if x happens to be 2, the answer would be B, but what if x is equal to 1? In which case the answer would be C. 1 versus 1. Because we have completely the answer, the answer is D. Now, if we could sit here and plug in different values of X and M all day and beat it to death, but it's not necessary. Do you understand? The answer is D. The percentile, if you're curious, almost, almost two-thirds of the people got it wrong. Only 34% of the people had luck with it. Let's look at the next problem, problem number 9. Problem number 9 deals with normal distribution. Problem number 9 deals with normal distribution. We are told that the random variable y or random variable y is normally distributed with the mean with the mean of 200 and standard deviation and the standard deviation of 10. So let's plot the normal distribution with the mean of 200 and the standard deviation of 10 before we worry about anything else. And this is something we have to know. We have to know by heart what the normal distribution looks like. So here is our mean and we are told that that is 200 and we are told that the standard deviation is 10. That's very important part information. So if we go one standard deviation this way and one standard deviation that way, because, it's, because it is 10, we'll end up with 210 and 190. And one standard deviation will capture, if you go one standard deviation either way, it will capture 34% of the population. 
And again, this is something we have to know by heart. We have to understand that when we go one standard deviation either way, either up or down from the mean, we end up capturing almost two-thirds of all the observation. Two-thirds would have been 66% or 68, but almost two-thirds. If we go one more standard deviation, if we go one, one more standard deviation to 220 and 180, we'll end up capturing almost 90% of the population, almost 90%, two, two and a half percent, two and a half percent of the population lies in this tail, and two and a half percent of the population lies in this tail. In which means, by the time we go through two, two standard deviation, we have captured 95% of the population. Let's see what the question is actually asking. It says, if that's the case, then in column A, we have, question is, how do they phrase it? Before I put it on the blackboard the way I have in my notes, let's see how they phrase it. You see, they put it in words, they don't put it in symbol. So I'm going to read it to you verbatim as it appears in the book. It says, the probability of the event that the value of y is greater than 220. One more time, the prob probability of the event that the value of y is greater than 220. How do we write it in symbols, in, in the language of mathematics? This is how we write it. What's the probability, what are the odds that y, which is the variable here, is more than 220? 220. Really? Well, the odds that it's more than 220 is about 2.5%. It's approximately 2.5%. Well, that was very straightforward. It's right here. The odds that it's going to be more than 210, um, more than 220 is this tail right here. It never ends, you understand? And that's just that's just two and a half percent. Well, that was too, too bloody easy. Let's look at question of uh, column B. In column B, in column B, they have one sixth. They have one sixth. What? Let's, let's understand, okay? Let's understand before you waste your time here too much with it. One third, one third. Everybody knows. One third, everybody knows, is equal to 33 and one third percent. Everybody knows that. A third is about 33, 33.33 always repeating. So let's just say that if it's approximately equal to, let's just pretend that one third is approximately equal to 33 percent. Well, let's not pretend that's true. It's, there is no pretending here. That is true that one third is approximately 33 percent. Because we're saying approximately, that's why we cannot, we cannot be wrong. If that's true, then half of one third Half of one third, if you if you were to take half of it, if you were to take half of that, divide this by two, half of one third is one sixth. And therefore one sixth has to be approximately half of thirty whatever the half of thirty-three is. Half of thirty-two is sixteen, isn't it? Half of thirty-two is sixteen. Six, thirty-two divided by two is sixteen, and therefore it's sixteen and a half. In other words, one sixth, one sixth is sixteen and a half percent. This is two and a half percent. Obviously, sixteen and a half percent is bigger. Obviously, sixteen and a half percent is bigger. And therefore, the answer here is going to be B. Let's see what the percentile was. The percentile is forty-six. Again, majority of the people missed it. Majority of the people missed it. Let's look at problem number ten. Problem number ten says. Problem number 10 says, yes, on the next page, it's a multiple choice question, it says, the ratio of, ratio of one third to three eighth is equal to what? You have to figure out the ratio of one third to three eighth. Well, let's do it then, shall we? One third, ratio of one third to three eighth. And how do we how do we divide one fraction by another fraction? How do we divide it? Well, we simply take, take the first fraction, the top fraction, which is one third, and we multiply it. We multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. It's three eighth, so the eighth will end up on the top, and three will end up on the bottom. So it's simply eight ninth. The answer is 8 9. And what answer choice would that be? 8 to 9. 8 to 9 is D. Answer choice is D. Answer 
answer is D, 8 to 9. And I hope the percentile here was quite large. And the percentile in this case, don't forget, don't worry, don't confuse with all of this percentage here. Let's put it right under here. 62% of people had no trouble with it. About two fifths of the people missed it. About two two fifths of the miss people missed it. The next problem that you see there, problem number 11, problem number 11 is something that I want to do it tomorrow separately, all by itself. We're only going to do that problem only. And that problem deals with the notion of permutation and combination. Not a simple concept for a lot of people to understand. Uh, people, people, uh, they have trouble a lot of the time. I've seen my clients, they have trouble with permutations and combinations, problems dealing with probability uh, and uh, statistics in general. Do you understand? Normal distribution and so forth. Permutation and combination is a very important topic. You will always find problems based on those concepts, few problems. We're going to do it separately and we're going to understand it thoroughly. What I do want you to do in the meantime, as a homework for before you watch the next video, okay, listen very carefully, before you watch the next video, if you have not watched the videos already, I hope you are watching them in sequence, but if you have not, watch, watch day 3096 to 3100. There are five videos there dealing with permutations and combinations. And then there are five more videos that we did that we did later on, which are from day number three thousand one hundred and sixteen to three thousand one hundred and twenty. There are ten videos that we did on the concept of permutations and combinations. First, do this problem yourself. Do this problem yourself, and if you can do it fine without any trouble, kudos for you. But if you had trouble with it, if you end up, ended up getting a wrong answer, then before you look in the back of the book, don't look in the back of the book. Watch this video, understand, learn the concept thoroughly. And if you don't want to watch all of them, at least watch few of these uh, out of these ten, and then give it a shot one more time, and then tomorrow we'll do it together. Okay, bye now.